All right. Uh, we're here with the fresh off the boat star, Constance Wu, um, breakout star of last TV season, the show, super successful. Do you have your bags packed for Taiwan? Uh, that was not the first question I expected you to have. <laughs> um, no, I do not. That's still uh, a couple months away. So, uh, no. But I have <laughs> plenty of bug spray, I guess. Because, you know, those mosquitoes are no joke. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, you know, again, as I, I just mentioned, the show is a, it's just, is, is a bona fide hit on ABC. Um, last year you guys were um you know on in th on thursday and then did so well that you guys in the second season became an anchor show for abc on tuesday was is like having that kind of um i mean well first of all it must be like super gratifying to know that the show is so well received and so well liked and everything that abc you know put you on tuesday as their anchor show but is there any added pressure at all that you guys feel now that you know it's such a hit Uh, and I mean, uh, if something's a hit, you know, just keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> just don't change it up, I guess. Uh, I, I don't feel necessarily added pressure. It's probably more of a relief, actually, that there has been an audience who has really responded to it and that has continuously responded to it. Because um, I know that there was sort of a collective anxiety about the show when it first came out. So to have it, um, do so well for a network show, and especially for the first of its kind in over 20 years, it's quite a relief that we're now in our third season. Um, and I actually think that's probably the first time that's happened, that a, a network show starring an all Asian American family has gone into three seasons. Because I know All American Girl got one season. Yeah, yeah, it was canceled after one season, and it was even after Home Improvement at that time, so it wasn't even the anchor show. So yeah, I mean, you know, I think the show, obviously, it's safe to say, has kind of um, also set its own history um, on that, and it's paved the way for, like, Dr. Ken. Yeah, I was going to say, speaking of Home Improvement and Tim Allen, I mean, now Dr. Ken is in its second season, which is so great, because that cast is so talented and lovely and wonderful, and I'm so excited that they're or at least two, and I hope that there are many more um, Asian American shows that come along. Yeah, and you know, um, you you before before this, you predominantly done a lot of film, a lot of stage, and whatnot, and that it seems to be the place where a lot of diversity lacks. And then you go to television, and you have you know shows led by African American strong female characters, um, Jane the Virgin, you know, uh, a Latino cast, your cast, Doctor Ken, everything else. Do you see, I mean, I know you have, um, you know, this whitewash out hashtag that, that you, you know, you're part of, and Margaret Cho is a big part of that as well. Um, do you, but do you see any kind of uh, real difference in television where film has, still has to catch up? Yes, uh, completely. I think television is where the great innovation and great storytelling is coming because it's a place, especially in the new digital marketplace, where artists are allowed to be very free and very daring with their choices. I think a lot of the movie industry these days is very fear and finance based. So they fear doing anything that is not already an established property, whether it's like a comic book or a reboot um, or you know some other property like a toy that already exists and they make that toy into a movie. They're afraid because they're essentially looking for a financial outcome, which is understandable. I mean, like, <laughs> money makes us comfortable. Like, I get it, right? But, uh, you know, when you want to make good art and good stories, I really think that the impetus and the motivation should not be fear of new ideas or innovation or fear of pushing things to a non-American audience that they might not have a track record for showing whether or not they like. I think a lot of movie studios um, are focusing on like international sales, which is why like, I don't know, apparently like Adam Sandler movies and Bruce Willis movies do really great internationally, even though they don't do so great in the States. Um, but you know, that's again, that's fear based because an American studio has never made like, maybe they've made like a handful of Asian American stories. 
Um, so that daring innovation has not been tested. So there's no proof that it doesn't sell. Um, but in television, we, uh, we, we have more innovators and, and more room to be creative. Um, and so it's a, it's a medium that I'm very fortunate to work in. Yeah, and and you know, um, on that same note with the with the whitewashed out, there's also the hashtag of starring John Cho and starring Constance Wu, and you're you know on on Easy A and, and uh, on Chicago. What's that? Starring O, starring Maggie Q, starring I, I don't want it to be. I'm like yeah, yeah. There there is that movement, um, which is actually I think John Cho said it best is that it's a great way to continue the dialogue in a positive way that's not blame based um because sometimes when you not that you know people don't necessarily deserve blame they might but uh, when you blame somebody for something it causes defensiveness and the defensiveness causes like very lazy unintelligent excuses um because we're all human and we get defensive when we're being attacked especially when we didn't know something that we were doing something poorly because it wasn't our intention, it was just the systemic preferences that have been like put in our brains. Um, so the starring John Cho movement is great because it just sort of changes the visual you have of what types of faces deserve a whole story. Um, and so it's it's a really positive and fun uh, way to do it. So it's 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 flattering to be a part of, and um, and I hope it continues with John Cho's incredibly handsome face. Um, and uh, yeah, it's fun. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think it's. I mean, just on a personal note, um, I think it's great what what you guys are doing and the stuff like like you know the platform. You notice, you realize, you have this platform that you can go ahead and make a positive impact with just the same way like Gina Rodriguez is doing on, on the Latino and Latina side, everything else. And it, it's, it, it must be also kind of, um, you know, freeing and, and, um, something that I know you and you personally enjoy, cause you've mentioned how you're going to work with, with a few Asian directors, do some of your own stuff starring Asian cast and everything. And I think it's a great voice that, um, you're pushing out there. Well, yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, I still love the work. I mean, I love being an actor. I love storytelling. I love movies and books. Uh, and that's my goal. That's my type of activism, is activism in a way behind the lens. And, you know, it's it's kind of strange for me, honestly, to have this platform from which to speak, because I never sought out this platform. You know, I'm not those amazing Asian American journalists who have been writing these things for years, but like, they've been invisible to everybody else because nobody listens to them. And then like, you know, the actress gets to like have a platform to say things. Like it almost feels a little unearned to me, you know, in the academic sense unearned, but it is something that a lot of journalists um, and news outlets are coming to me to ask. So if they're coming to me, I feel like I might as well use that opportunity for good instead of just, you know, talking about my skincare products, <laughs> you know, like, you know, this is a, if they're coming to you to ask you for 15 minutes of your time on the phone to say a few things, say things that matter to you and that matter to um, your community and that might make an impact. Again, it's not where I'm placing all of my focus, but when it happens upon, you know, my phone interviews, I will talk about it. And I, and I hope that this encourages journalists to seek out other Asian American writers and journalists and academics who have been saying these things for years. Um, and then on the Hollywood side, I'm trying to in, meet all the female Asian American writer directors I can um, and try to sort of really nurture their content and their stories um, and uh, help in any way I can, especially with the um, Asian American female experience is very important to me. Well, you did mention um, the work and that, um, you know, that's what uh, you're being praised for on Fresh Off the Boat for. Um, what I think is great about what they've done with Jessica is, you know, I mean, season one, we got we got a taste of Jessica Wong and, and of course, um, you know, everybody, was a big fan of hers. And as I mentioned, I was a big fan, of course, Ian Chen's character is still right there rivaling. But um, they this year they gave 
Jessica has has just so much more rather than just a stay at home mom or anything. I mean, she's a realtor. She's renting out to these these creepy renters that she's got. She um, she's helping at Cattleman's Ranch, um, and you know she just has so much going on. Is it um, for to have such a big ensemble and to have that kind of depth behind a character and that much going on with the character? Is it a refreshing thing rather than just being you know part of the cast and a supporting supporting player because it seems like everybody on the show has their own little storylines that have kind of keep developing and developing oh that's definitely just such an honor and so refreshing to be a part of and i really have to credit the writing staff of fresh off the boat for really um taking the time to make every character very whole um, I think that a lot of times, especially in Asian American stereotypes and Asian American uh, portrayal in film and TV, like people are so concerned with like, make us look good. And I don't think, <clears throat> personally, I don't think that's the key to defeating stereotypes because then that's just another model minority stereotypes. I think the key to it is make us look whole, like W-H-O-L-E, because it, you know, that shows that we are entire humans. We're not just types. We're not just like the hot guy or like the smart girl or, you know, the screaming mother. Um, I have a real estate business, but I also fail at my first um, like big real estate venture. And uh, I, meaning Jessica, and, you know, that shows how insecure she is about like what it means to fail when she's put so much pressure on her own children to be successful and how embarrassing that is. Um, yet at the same time, she finds meaning through her friendship with Honey, played by the amazing Chelsea Crisp, um, to you know work through those problems. And the writing staff really makes sure that every kid and adult on that show has both the good elements and also like the very embarrassing human elements. I mean, even something as small as the Emery character and his scream jars, where like the reason he's so happy is because he has these jars that he screams his frustration into. And you know, it's a joke, but it also just reveals that like people are not one thing. We're not just the good, sh showing us just in a good light. Let's show us in a real, whole human light and our writers just do such a great job with that and give us such great material to work off of i, I really owe a lot of the success of the show to them well what you kind of touched on um what i also think they did great uh for jessica in particular was they gave her this developing friendship with honey um which i think is one of i mean it, you know we know jessica as like stern and and the the snippy one-liners and the sarcasm but then she's with Honey and there's such total opposites, but it just seems to work so well. Was that something, you know, because last season I thought, you know, she was just a guest star and, and um, you know, would pop in for an episode or two when needed. But that really developed and you guys had a partnership. Was that something that you guys pushed for or was it something that was just a great surprise that the writers brought on? Well, I mean, the previous season she was just a guest star, but we loved her so much that we brought her on as a regular. Um, and I think because she was a regular, they really wanted to establish those storylines um, where they really developed her character. And they did such a great job. And she's such a great actress. Um, and, uh, oh God, I was going to say something about her. I totally forgot what I just, what it just was. Oh, oh, I was going to say, you know, people, if they only see the previews for my show and they only look at the commercials or the gifts or, you know, the clips, of course, it's very easy for people to be like, oh, she's a stereotype. All she does is scream at her kids to do their homework because those are like the little cute clips that they show. But there are also very subtle ways in which we are defying stereotype. And a lot of them are manifested through my friendship with Chelsea Crisp's character. I mean, the fact that we both are obsessing over Denzel Washington movies, like, or Stephen King novels, um, or that we like to gossip about, like, the neighborhood street, street traffic controllers, like, things like that, those have nothing to do with stereotypes at all. all. They're just unique to, um, Sorry, they're just unique to the experience of, I have to go to my, I left my bedroom door open and my bunny's not supposed to go in there because she's going to chew up my shoes. I'll be right back.
Okay. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not supposed to do this during the video, but I'll let her say hi so you guys can see her. Uh, she just went into my bed like a bad bunny. She only has Actually, one eye. When you were speaking, she made a little guest appearance behind you and she stopped in okay. front of the camera. Yes, she speaking into my bed. She only has one eye. She lost her eye to glaucoma. Poor baby. She's a good well, girl. She's very um, famous. We see all your Instagram pictures of her and, and tweeting out. Oh. We just had her big her screen debut on video for Vogue with Lena Dunham, and she was just a better actor than me. <laughs> yes. Okay, she's not allowed in my bedroom because she chews up my shoes, but uh, she's allowed everywhere else in my house. So anyway, sorry. Uh, okay, so yeah, what we were saying, Chelsea Chris is awesome and wonderful and such a good actress, and I love that our friendship doesn't revolve around a man. Um, and it just revolves around like silly things that we talk about, like our business or fortune tellers or like our obsession with movies or books and things like that. Um, it's, it's special in a subtle way that not a lot of people notice because they're so busy, like pointing out the other things about our show. So I would like to point out that good thing about it. Um, now, yeah, I, we know you have the chemistry um, there with her and with the rest of your cast, but having being in this second season and knowing um you know and, and having a limited amount of episodes in the first and then having a full um onslaught of episodes in the second season has it brought the cast even closer i mean it just seems like it'd be so much fun on set i mean you have randall park who's just incredible and this season was just so great and you know the three kids and it, it just must be such a great and grandma of course yeah, you know, I think it's really brought the three boys. We're all close together. Um, and I love that they're such good kids and they're smart and they're like woke and they're fun loving and they're kind to each other um, and super talented. As for like the rest of it, I mean, and I'll go on record saying this and they'll say the same thing. They'll be like, Constance is not really very social with us. I'm, you know, like I love working with Randall and Chelsea. Uh, and all of our guest stars, but like, I'm, I'm kind of really professional when I'm on set. Like, I don't really gab or like talk between takes. I'm like in my trailer and I'm like going over my backstory and my like, the heart that I think motivates the next scene. Um, and I, I do have a wonderful, wonderful group of friends here in Los Angeles and in New York and, um, do have that have nothing to do with my show. And so I, I kind of keep work and life very separate. Um, it just works better that way for me. So I wish I could say like, oh, we're all one big happy family on set. Um, and I think they are, but I don't think I'm really a part of that. Not because I'm like being mean, just because I'm like pretty quiet. Like I want to like stay. Yeah. stay so nice. My... Yeah, also it's funny because they probably, my my castmates and like the parents of my castmates probably think I'm very much like Jessica because you know I really think that when you're acting you're not necessarily that character but you find the parts of yourself that might be like that character and you feed those parts of your brain and so when you're feeding those parts of your brain all day even if I'm not walking around talking to Jessica's accent that part of me that small part of me that's the part I'm nurturing throughout the whole day. So that's the part that even when I'm not acting, everybody on set sees, uh, it's not like me at all. But you know, I, ha I have bits of it. And uh, yeah, I have to keep it separate. Well, um, you know, another, uh, what I imagine be pretty difficult for an actor um, at all is, you know, like I mentioned, you, you've done a lot of stage, a lot of film, um, you know, theater, and then you come to a comedy and it's not an audience-based comedy, but you're expected to land these jokes and and make them, you know, because it because it is a comedy, make them funny, and and you don't really have a, an instant reaction. Is it hard as an actor to know if what your delivery is 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 going to be what you hope it will be, or or does it does a crew give you help, or or how do you know what you're nailing? Because I mean, you did obviously seem to be doing it pretty great. Thank you. You know, I'm not a stand-up comedian, so my job actually isn't to make them laugh. So I don't need that feedback. 
uh, my job is to really portray the life of this character. And if the writing is funny and the circumstance is funny and the editing is funny, then it'll be funny. And if I think personally, if I was trying to like sell jokes out there, it would, wouldn't look like Jessica. It would look like an LA actress trying to make you laugh. That's not fun for me, you know? <laughs> What's fun is this character. So, um, you know, even when I did theater, I actually didn't do a lot of comedy unless it was like classical stuff. Like, you know, I did a lot of Shakespeare's comedies. Um, so that audience feedback is not necessarily something I was used to as a dramatic actor. And so it's definitely not something that I, you know, feel the loss of now that I'm on television. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> it's, if it's funny, I think it's because of the writing and it's because of the editing and it's because I'm not trying to be funny. I'm trying to be true. Well, it obviously uh, is funny and has working because you, um, you know, yourself have racked up two consecutive Critics' Choice nominations for Lead Actress in a Comedy Series. You were nominated last year for a TCA nomination, which is huge for Individual Achievement in a Comedy. And oh, yes. of course, genderless too, right? So that makes that? it was genderless too. I think that yes. That was cool. So it's like yeah, Jeffrey Gambor won that category. Like, why should it be gendered, you know? Uh, so that was fun. Anyway. And, uh, but of course, most important is you were nominated for a Gold Derby Award for Best Actress in a Comedy Series. So there is that. But has so all I, of this... You're saying, because I, I achieved the highest honor. I can quit now. Exactly, exactly. Um, has has all, the, um, all the attention that you've got, you know, at, last year um, and, and this year with all the Emmy buzz still, has that kind of seeped in yet like are you used to it or is it still a shock and and kind of crazy to you oh i mean talk is talk right <laughs> so now that i've had more of it around me i'm more used to it and i i place less value on it to be honestly to be honestly to be honest with you uh so um which is really nice because I, I know last year we were talking and you were like, do you feel any pressure? And I was like, no, I don't feel pressure, which is probably like me in denial. But I was like, but my friends are putting pressure on me. Um, so yeah, I think they're, they've laid off a little on that. <laughs> and then for me, uh, it's just like, it didn't happen last year. So I was kind of like, oh, well, I could it. Like, I know how that feels. Like, I know how I'm going to navigate that. So that's cool. Um, yeah, and I think I'm going to be nominated. But I'm glad that I get to talk to you and that I was, that other people get to watch the show and enjoy it for that sake. Well, we're glad that you get, that, I, that I'm glad that I get to talk to you too. And that, you know, there is, and, and there, there are three um, open, open slots you could stay in the comedy lead actress category this year because of shows that have ended previously. Um, and there's still that buzz around you. There's still those predictions around you. And if you are nominated, do you have an episode in mind that you would submit to voters as, you, you know, your highlight of the season? Yeah, I like the boys to man episode. Was that this season? Yeah, that was. That's what they actually sent in your Emmy for your consideration oh, package. Oh. Yes, that. That's great. I mean, I also like the Rent Day episode because it really shows Jessica failing at something and having a friendship, but <laughs> that's probably less funny than the voice to man, which is just, I mean, Matt Coon wrote that and it was just so funny. Like, you, he just made it so funny and also personally I love boys to men like the group I grew up doing acapella choirs so like I'm like all into that stuff and uh, the fact that they were able to tie in those elements and like you know those like baby calendars like with the babies dressed as fruits and flowers to tie in like all of these references but also have it keyed into story and character is just like friggin brilliant and I really enjoyed that episode a lot so boys to man that's and a good one year, to woman i'm gonna tell <laughs> you you better know that because we need the girl asian american perspective um 
Anyway, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, that's good. You, you have a lot to choose from. You know, the other one um, is the Shaquille O'Neal Motors. I mean, I thought that was a really great one. It showed a lot of Jessica's heart and, and a lot, you know, and, and just vintage Jessica going in and, you know, buying at sticker price is just, you cannot do that with her. Um, but you had, you had a, a lot to choose from. That Boys to Man one, that's the one that they sent um, as the NY FYC package. So it's a good choice. Um, and send an FYC package last year because I don't know if they did, but I'm glad they did this year. They did this year for sure. Um, well, uh, you know, before we wrap up, there are a few fan questions, as I mentioned, that we that we do have. So I'm going to go over just a few of them. What's that? Give me all twenty of them. <laughs> all twenty of them. <laughs> um, all right, I'll start with with one. Um, your friend Jonathan Tucker. Tweeted out, wanted to know if uh, you enjoyed working with said Jonathan Tucker and if you had any plans to work with him again, maybe sci fi high moon part two. I loved working with Jonathan Tucker because he is the best person in the world. And I hated it because, I mean, how can you stand out next to all of that handsome and talent? I don't, I don't even. I don't even remember seeing myself. It, we did a show called High Moon. I don't remember seeing myself in it because I was so distracted by his incredible talent. He is somebody who should be nominated for an Emmy. Yeah, for, for Kingdom. Show. Yeah, I agree. God, just even for his body alone. Hey, <laughs> um, and I do hope to work with him again. That would be great. He's also just been a great person in my life in terms of like support and like helping me navigate simple things like getting a lawyer and like an accountant. Um, it's been helpful you know i don't know anyone yeah so it's helpful um well max wants to know um what what exactly is your favorite part of working on fresh off the boat uh i like getting to play the not cruel very embarrassing parts of jessica the parts where she's vulnerable where she's embarrassed where she messes up uh where she like has a difficult time saying I'm sorry. That's another good one. The one with Casey Wilson, that episode. Um, <laughs> yeah, I have a major girl crush on Casey Wilson, by the way. Um, She's incredible. Yeah. She should have been nominated for, uh, I mean, like three years in a row for her show. Oh my God, she's so hot too. I just love her. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, so that's my favorite part. Playing like, playing the less, the things that don't show Jessica in a good light. So I think they make her a real person. Uh, which episode, this is from Harvey, which episode this season would you say was the most fun you had? Was it the boys to man one? No, it was probably the one with Casey Wilson because I got to do all the scenes with her, which I'm forgetting what it was called. But that one, yeah. That yeah, was the, probably the one where she, she played the mom and, and cut you off in the line. In the traffic line. Yeah, traffic yeah, line. yeah. Um, it's a great episode. Yeah, that's a good one. That was the most fun for me. Yeah, you guys have had um, some pretty great guest actors, as you um, had just mentioned, including, um, you know, Shaquille O'Neal, of course, and uh, Casey Wilson, Courtney Thorne Smith, and that really cool, like, last scene that nobody expected her to pop up in. Ken Jong. Are, are there any um, other guest actors, uh, Wonky wants to know, that you would want to guest star on Fresh Off Boat? Oh, yes. I mean, I want it, I mean, I feel like a lot of, just like all of Hollywood, it's all about the man. Like, I feel like a lot of our guest stars have been like men, and like I want some like really awesome Asian American women um, to guest star, uh, I'll just be on it. I mean, they might be too good for us, but you know, people like Margaret Cho or, you know. That would be awesome. Or, you know, any of these just like really great women who have been doing great stuff for years and are so talented. Um, yeah. And we have um, Susan Park, who plays my sister. Very, very talented actress, great person. Um, everybody should look her up too, because she's great. Uh, Jessica Yang wants to know if there are any other roles that you would like to play in the future. Maybe a superhero, perhaps. I know you were you were superimposed into the Avengers. 
I am not into playing superheroes <laughs> because like I've said before, like I want to show people, I think, I think it'll be a big milestone for me when we see Asians not as heroes, but as whole people who go through a lot of normal human shit. Oh, I probably can't have on this, sorry. You know, okay. that like, we all go through because when I was a kid um, and I was like feeling lonely or emo or whatever, those are the stories that moved me, not Superman or like these heroes, but like ordinary girls going through things that I thought I was all alone going through and then I would read you know a tree grows in Brooklyn and Francie in that book was going through a lot of the feelings I was going and it made me feel less alone in the world and I think that's one of the the big accomplishments of art and story is to make us feel less alone in the world um, with our personal embarrassment so no I don't want to play a superhero one of my dream roles though is in um I love musicals and I really want to play Audrey in Little Shop of Horrors because I love that musical and uh, and I think it's just, it's very relevant. It's like living in Skid Row and having these ideas of somewhere that's green, like an idea of success, but it really like kind of gets bastardized with like uh, this pursuit of like money and literally giving your blood to a plant. And it's so funny. Little Shop of Horrors, Audrey, love it. The music is great. That's my dream role. Starring John Cho and Constance Wu. You know, John Cho would actually probably be, he's too handsome to play Seymour. Uh -huh. I bet he'd be a good dentist who was played by, a, what's his name, Steve Martin in the, in the original thing. Well, uh, Rick Moranis, you can just call him up again, see what he's doing, see if he can reprise the role. That'd be pretty cool. Oh, he's so good in it, right? Um, yeah, I love that musical so much. And I love musicals in general. Any musical, I will do. <laughs> well, uh, just two more. Uh, if you um, had met Jessica in real life, do you think you'd be friends with her? No. <laughs> so, no, I, you know, I'm very <laughs> juicy with my friends. <laughs> She'd be a little bit, like I can't even be friends with improv people. You know what I mean? Like, it's a little much for me. <laughs> um, so, I don't, I think I would be like, you're a cool chick, like, you're a down lady, like, I, I respect you, but you, I probably wouldn't, like, hang with her. <laughs> and then, last question, and we kind of touched on this before uh, we even started the broadcast, but what are, are what do you have um, lined up for in terms of future projects, and do you want to, would you ever consider going more into the directing phase? Um, than in front of the camera? Um, well, I'm in the middle of shooting an independent feature right now that I'm the, the lead of that has to do with um, two women getting married and sort of uh, the, the barriers of intimacy they kind of go through. And it's a, it's a comedy, but like it's a dramedy um, with like almost all female, like director, DP, producer, like I'm into that, you know? And I'm into LGBTQ stories. I don't think there's enough of that at all. Um, and then I have a series that I'm developing about the Chinese Exclusion Act at the turn of the century. Um, that's very early stages. We're still like doing a treatment. Um, but that's really exciting to me because people don't know much about it. And it's a, it's a really interesting time in history and it's an important historical thing. And it's, uh, you know, we're basing it in San Francisco, it's Chinatown. And, um, it's just interesting to see how a law like that can shape the huge, amazing culture that is San Francisco today, including gay culture. Um, so I'm working on that. I've written two feature films that uh, I'm still like tweaking. And uh, yeah, I'm just trying to, I've been taking at least like two meetings a week with um, Asian American female director or writers who I just sort of find on my own, like looking for women who are just doing dope shit. And then I like tell my manager, like, hey, I want to meet this person. And they try to, to reach out and find them. Um, and also like with Asian American female writers, I'm trying to meet a lot of them, um, which is really cool. Also kind of depressing because I met this one girl, Jenny Han, and she had her book optioned that was about an Asian American teenager. 
this wasn't for me to play, but you know, I just want to meet her. She's doing cool stuff and I love that. And I want to like support my Asian American women, not compete, you know? And then she was saying like, the studio was like, well, can you make your lead white? Um, and then we'll give you like, it'll be so much easier. And I love that she was like, no. Um, but the fact that she even had to do that was like kind of depressing to me, but it's also really exciting that she was like, no, this is, this is the story. And this is the way I want to tell it. Um, that takes some real ovaries, you know what I mean? Uh, what was the rest of the question? What else am I doing? No, that was it. No, I mean, unless you're, or yeah, or would you consider directing? But I think you kind of touched on that. I already directed. I directed a short film like four years ago that I wrote. And it was so hard. I don't know if I'd ever do it again, but um, I'm thinking about it. I think part of the reason that was hard is because I was so broke. I put the whole production on like credit cards, my own credit cards, which just recently paid off. Um, and I didn't act in it, but I wrote a father-son story. <laughs> I didn't even have any brothers, so I don't know why I wrote that. Like, and then it was about a fish, and then like the father finds this fish, and the fish becomes its like substitute son, but then the fish is like a puppet that I hand sewed and painted, and then the, the, the fish starts like talking. <laughs> it's a lot of magical realism, which is stuff I like. Oh, we've also like optioned a bunch of properties, um, or am in the process of optioning like certain books and things that I want to um, make for Asian American artists. So I'm really trying to do work not only in front of the lens, but behind it. That sounds like a lot. Well, I know we at uh, Gold Derby are hoping that um, you'll soon receive really great news uh, in terms of the Emmys. Uh, thank you for joining us and, you know, don't hope keep to me. see you again soon. What's okay. that? I said, don't keep your fingers crossed because I don't, do you see my Mr. Rogers mug? That's really cool. I know. And then when you put a hot liquid in it, his cardi his jacket changes to his cardigan. Like it turns into his. That's even cooler. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. You know, it's a great way to start the morning. So uh, thank you, Ralph. Um, are we done?